Hello, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book rant. Today, I'm going to be covering this book, The Good Fairies of New York. Written by Martin Millar, an introduction by Neil Gaiman. I picked this up because any book with an introduction by Neil Gaiman either shelled out a lot of money for him to have an introduction there or Neil Gaiman felt that the book was good enough for him to write an introduction for. Kind of in the same way that Bill Bryson wrote a introduction for The Ascent of Rum Doodle. Now I have opinions about Bill Bryson. I think some of his memoirs are really good and his memoirs relating to the Appalachian Trail are very, very mediocre. But in this case, I know that Neil Gaiman has written a lot of amazing stories. So seeing that it was only $7 on Coaz shelves, I thought, yeah, I'll take this out and read it. And uh, I regret that. This book, I could only barely finish. It was just very unbearable. Every single one of the main four characters is detestable and loathsome in the worst ways. It's not, none of them have any qualities that make me want to continue reading the book. And the only reason I did continue reading the book was out of some stubbornness that I paid money for it, so I'm going to finish it. Even then, I could not tell you what happens in certain portions of the book, but the main characters in this book are, well, two humans that live across the street from the other, and then two fairies from the British Isles that have ended up in New York City. Well, they treat people's possessions as only valid if there is a claim related to their clan. So certain instruments or certain items they will argue back and forth, oh well it was in this clan's hands up until this year, and it goes so many times back and forth they are willing to steal whatever they feel like they're flighty they're distractible and they're just argumentative in so many ways and then the two human characters are just gross one of them is lazy and refuses to lower himself, I guess, to doing menial labor, despite living above a theater where he barely makes rent one month and then the next month he doesn't even have the money to. He's basically broke and about to be kicked out and he still acts like he's above certain work, which is just really irritating. The female human main character is not necessarily gross in behavior in the same way as the rest of them. She's mostly kind of cast in a sympathetic light to some degree. She uh, has bowel problems and she's an artist and so she has difficulties being in public and she has difficulties making money. She has this ambitious project that she's working on, but then she's also spiteful and throws rocks at performers that she goes to see and then, you know, claims, well, I wasn't the only person throwing rocks, so I'm not that bad. It's not fun to read. It was really just a hard book to read, and then there's a subplot where or rather, the main plot follows the two fairies. They are lost and unable to easily get home and 
find or are trying to find certain instruments or certain artifacts from their clan's history and they end up finding it in the hands of a human both fairies claim that their clan has a legitimate claim to the instrument and that the other clan's claim is invalid due to whatever reason and so they're going back and forth on in arguments and never really cooperating so they have in theory a mutual goal but because both refuse to work with the other in any decent way it doesn't get things done and then the side plot is that the male human is willing to part with his instrument if he is able to learn how to play it but he's terrible and tone deaf and he just refuses to work hard to learn how to play it and so the fairy ends up doing you know trying her best but while also being just a terrible person and then there's a further plot where the fairies seem to have pissed off some locals and some people from back home and so everywhere they go there are people looking for them and want to effectively kill them but not really kill per se it's it, it was very confusing altogether this made a confusing and boring book frustrating there were parts of it I just hated reading through the there's also like a romantic subplot where both of these terrible human beings are in a situation where one likes the other and also kind of hate likes her he, he wants he wants her but also hates the kind of artistic person that she represents and it was this is just a really bizarre way to spend gosh 240 pages honestly I don't quite know I don't quite know what people saw in this book and of the books that I have purchased it is one of the first that I am willing to put back into the used book system I understand now why it was in the shelves at a used bookstore in the first place so Altogether, I wouldn't want to read this ever again. I barely got through the first read through and I feel like I almost had to have skipped parts of it because I do not remember a lot of what happens in the second half of the book around, you know, 50 to 70% of the way through it. I just, this was one of those books, it's been a long time since I just had to talk negatively about a book on this channel but this is one of those books where I would never recommend it and honestly this is advice to you to stay away from this book if you like coherent stories or stories with at least one likable main character then this book is not for you there are no likable characters in the main cast there is no reasonable plot because the plot relies on the emotions of these terrible detestable human beings so yeah that's all I have to say about this book unlike some other books I didn't like I can't really go into details because it wasn't riveting enough for me to want to look back, turn the pages, and get those details. Thinking of the book The Grey Bastards, it was interestingly written and some of the characters were good, but put in a really bizarre setting, one that just infuriated me to read. This has none of that. It doesn't have good characters, has a terrible setting, even worse than The Grey Bastards, and none of the magical elements interacting with the human elements seem to mesh well, so I would never recommend this book to anyone. Anyway, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book rant.